Hey folks, it's Rob from Frugal Radio here. I'm uh, on a trip right now down into the States. I'm in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, of course, I brought some radio gear with me, so I thought I'd show you what I bring on my travel bag. This is actually my uh, carry-on that I use on the aircraft, and it has uh, some radio equipment in it. So let's have a look at the kind of thing that I bring with me when I'm going on a trip. Well, that's my uh, carry-on bag, and uh, let's dive in, see what we can find. So, right here at the back is where we keep some of the important stuff. So, first out, we have a Unid and SDS series uh, radio. So, that's an SDS 100. I have an 800 meg antenna on top. <laughs> the next thing that's uh, desperate to get out of the bag is this antenna. So, I like to use this antenna when I'm traveling. This is the one that uh, Darren Shields made from a broadsword antenna. It's excellent for uh, airband, but it works really well in VHF generally. And uh, down here in the US, there's still some VHF activity in, uh, in the 150s meg band that's interesting to monitor. So I like to use that antenna for that. Uh, then we have a BCD325. And uh, that scanner is uh, is pretty useful. It's uh, I use it for the analog, but also DMR and uh, next end. So it's uh, it has both those upgrades on it, and makes it a useful um, scanner to have for receiving digital stuff as well. Uh, the SDS receives digital, but right now I haven't yet purchased the next end and DMR upgrades for it. Uh, what else is in the bag? Right uh, here we have. A network radio so this is a radio tone RT4 and that is used for uh, for communicating on the network radio platform so I have Zello set up on that radio uh, let's continue and see what else is in the bag so in the next pouch I have um, a little dipole antenna kit. So that's the dipole antenna kit that uh, you can either order separately or get it as part of a bundle with the RTL SDR version 3 dongles. And it also comes with two larger telescopic uh, sections. So you basically load it up, uh, you know, switch out the telescopic sections based on what band you're going to be monitoring. And uh, let's see what else is down the bag here. My hand is deep within it. So I have an SMA extension cable, and that is to use with the uh, SDR. So I, uh, I have the RTL SDR version 3 dongle that I bring along with me on trips, and it's, uh, it's very useful. Uh, it can do a lot of different things, whether I'm picking up uh, analog or digital systems is very useful to have. And then uh, for the SDR equipment, of course, we have the laptop. So that's my old Dell laptop that uh, that travels with me. It's a nice, it's a 14 inch, or is it 13, 13 inch screen, full HD. Um, it is an older laptop, but it's uh, it's pretty useful. And, uh, and it has the SDR software on it. I've got a couple of USB cables for the various devices carry a, a car charger system uh, for my phone. Also, we have the power adapter for the laptop. And finally, a USB extension cable. So usually, uh, yeah, I, I want to use the USB extension cable just so I can have the antenna for the SDR position near a window. Um, it doesn't have to be right beside the laptop. So the USB extension cable is useful for that. Um, and then, yeah, the odd random USB charger and stuff for, uh, for keeping devices, scanners fully charged up. So uh, yeah, let's start setting up and see what everything looks like. Well, before leaving on the trip, I set up a favorites list for uh, my Pennsylvania trip. So right now I wanna set up the systems for flying into Philly, I had the uh, the Philadelphia P25 system on. It's no longer in range where I am right now. Uh, need, well, some of the aviation stuff would be, but I'm uh, kind of at the far side of Montgomery County. So I, uh, I have that programmed up for now. 
So with that selected, we should be able to uh, start receiving some uh, some signals on that. Uh, police here are encrypted, but fire and EMS we should be able to pick up according to the radio reference database. Uh, so that's the first device. I'll leave that sitting there. So you can see there the uh, the union is already picking up some uh, VHF fire stuff. There was some tone outs there. I have positioned the dipole. It is just hanging from the valance there right now. And I'm just in the process of attaching the extension cable. Uh, if I go back, you can you can see it there just at the top. Um, right now I have like the uh, the shorter antenna on there because I'll start with some 700 megahertz. Um, or 800 megahertz trunk system monitoring. And you can see a cell tower out in the background, so that might cause some desensitivity to the receiver. Um, so next I'm gonna hook up the um, the extension cord. Actually, I may not need the USB extension, so I'll plug the SDR in and uh, hook that up to the computer and see what we can see. Okay, so this is everything uh, all set up and getting ready to explore the RF signals in the neighborhood. So we have uh, DSD Plus running right now, and uh, that's decoding a control channel in the 700 meg band. It's not particularly strong, but uh, it is decoding there. Uh, there's some locked out um, channels that you can see popping up there. That's because they're encrypted, so uh, DSD can't decode them. Uh, we're running that uh, RTL SDR version 3. This guy is just picking up something uh, on a different trunk network. And then this one, it's picking up VHF pages. And this VHF frequency seems to be a simulcast of uh, some of the stuff that's happening that uh, the DSD Plus is picking up. So I had uh, I just told it to hold on that frequency. I've now found probably four or five active VHF frequencies. As you can see there, uh, that one's probably a railroad actually, the 160 megs. So that's the little travel setup. That's what I'll be using to monitor while I'm away and, uh, and see what I can pick up. And right now, just running on the small antenna. If I decide to do more searching for digital stuff on VHF, then I'll switch the larger telescopics into the RTL SDR dipole. And I hang it there um, just to give it some extra height. Height is always your friend when it comes to antennas. I didn't need my USB extension cord, so right now just the RF extension cord, the SMA one, is running directly into the, uh, the RTL SDR dongle and providing signal to the laptop. Now here's something interesting I haven't uh, often seen. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen before. Um, let's just turn the volume down a little bit here. So um, you'll notice by looking at the channel list here that the control channel I'm monitoring is actually 853 megahertz. So 853.45. But lots of the system channel frequencies are in the 700. So we've got a mix of, well, not lots, but at least three of them. We've got a mix of 700 meg and 800 meg frequencies on one system. And that's the first time I've seen that. So um, normally, at least in my area, the, uh, the 770 meg band is used, but there would not be anything used on the same system in the 800 meg band. This is one trunk network, a P25 network, and it's got frequencies in both the 850s and the 770 range. So that's new to me, and uh, first time I've seen that. What about uh, you guys? Um, do the systems in your area run something similar to that? Uh, you're also hearing stuff here from the VHF. And, uh, yeah, this continues to populate with a real mix of 700 and 800 meg frequencies. And here's
here's a list of the various talk groups and radios that are active at this point. So um, I've gone down into the 450 meg band uh, now, 45475. There's a next end control channel. Uh, so that would be channel 963, the control channel there. Uh, it's pulled up a couple of other LCNs that you can see on the display. Right now, I don't know what frequencies those are, but by monitoring the FMP window and the, uh, the activity there and comparing it to the channel IDs that are being listed on the right, um, I would be able to identify what those frequencies are. Uh, another method that can be used to identify the frequencies is the information at the bottom of the screen here. In DSD Plus, it's showing me that I'm on site L50, and um, our network L50, site uh, 15. So um, it looks like it's quite a wide next down site. So uh, I can hop onto Radio Reference and have a, a look and see what that is. I might be able to find it there. So uh, if I am, I can then input the frequencies, um, or I can just watch the display and match them up. So uh, that's probably what I'll do because it could take a long time for me to find something on radio reference for an area that I don't know. Well, that's a look into the Frugal Radio travel bag and the type of equipment I bring with me. What about you? When you're going somewhere, do you use software to find radios, scanners, or a mixture of both? What has worked well for you in the past? What works well for you now? Feel free to fill in the comment section and let us know. All that remains now, though, is for me to thank you for watching today's episode and say stay safe out there. This is Frugal Radio. Out.